welcome to March. February is finally over, which is awesome. I always say it has the shortest amount of days because it sucks the most. Did you know more people kill themselves in the month of February than any other month, which is why, thank goodness, it's the shortest month, but then also why I felt it was super important in March to have this reading center around our happiness, okay? So there are a lot of reasons why people watch these videos, but at the very core of it, I think that people are watching because they want some good news, right? They want something to look forward to. In the uh, words of Omar Suleiman, a very wise guy, he says that the keys to happiness are three things. Something to love, something to do, and something to look forward to. So hopefully, I'm gonna give you all of those in this reading. So, um, even if your life is already full of joy and happiness and bliss, if you're just wanting to hear some validation about these good vibes that you're already feeling, that you know, to hear you're already on the right path, that you're making the right choices, the right decisions for that sense of security, security does bring happiness, right? Knowing what to expect. At the end of the day, happiness is what we're all seeking. It's the reason why we seek out help, why we would use a tarot reader, why we would look up our horoscope. This is why we're doing this, okay? We are fiends for happiness. It's the ultimate drug and so this is what we're focusing on in uh, March so this will be for your Sun moon or rising sign uh, a lot of times because of our moon sign correlates to our emotions and how we feel which is a lot of times why we make the decisions we make that might resonate a little bit better for you so um, it might be advisable to watch your moon sign as well as your Sun sign and then you could do your rising sign as well too if you'd like to um, what did I want to say okay so since we're focusing on happiness for March and how to kind of sustain that throughout the year this is how we're gonna look at it we're gonna do um, where are you at right now what is tainting any feelings of happiness that you otherwise should have right now what will make you feel happy or at least what you think will um, how is that perception true how is that perception false um, what will actually make you the most happy this month and then we're gonna look at the forces that are kind of outside of your control right, that is affecting this state, and um, which ones that are not really within your power are kind of accelerating your happiness, and then which ones are decelerating that. Um, we're going to look at what's going to bring you luck this month, your crystal of the month, your color energy, your lucky days, and then also any energies that you need to kind of bring into your life in order to help the happiness thrive, how to sustain the happiness once you get some, and then just kind of like a recap or overall nutshell of what March will look like for your sign. So um, kind of thinking about, you know, okay, well, is this reading going to be enough because it's for each specific zodiac sign, each sign has their own. Then I was thinking, um, those of you who have followed me for a long time might remember stop, drop, roll readings, uh, where it's something that you stop doing, something you drop from your life, and something you should roll with. I think I'm going to do a special on those, but um, really kind of amped up or accelerated in order to um, really harness in on that happiness sort of life coaching aspect. And the reason why I think this is important in March is because number one, it's the perfect time for spring cleaning, right? Uh, number two, the popularity of Marie Kondo right now and, you know, sort of thinking about let's get rid of the things that don't bring me joy. Let's just focus on the things that bring me joy and, you know, we all are always looking for joy. We're either trying to increase pleasure or decrease pain. And so that's kind of the purpose of this reading. And then here's the other thing. We're about to step into this Mercury retrograde. We're in the pre-shadow period right now as I record this. And so then when it hits us, um, in order to use this time in its fullest potential, we want to very much evaluate, okay, this isn't working for me. I wanna pitch this and I wanna do something that's gonna make my life better. It's gonna make me happier. It's gonna make me more joyful, more satisfied with life. And so um, I think I'm going to offer that like in sort of a goals and coaching, very intensive sort of way as a special. Um, once I decide to do that, if you're on the email list, um, I only send one email a month, so don't let that be a reason why you're not on my list. Um, then 
you'll be notified of that. And if there's like a coupon code or something that would be in there, uh, if you're not on the list, you should be because I give away, like I said, it's only one email a month, but I, every single month I give away a free 20 minute, um, video reading to uh, a random person selected from my list. So that being said, um, I'm sorry if this long intro did not bring you joy, if it decreased your happiness, but now you know what to expect in your reading. So let's get started. Hi Aries, welcome to March. Okay, so where are you at right now? What's going on? They're saying like, um, you might not be shifting your perspective as much as you need to, uh, but if you do do that, if you change the way that you think about things, there's a lot of um, love and joy happening. Some of you will be falling in love this month. Some of you will just be feeling a lot of love for what it is that you do, but there's definitely this overabundance of love energy in the month of March. Yay! They're saying some of this has... Um, is a like sort of a gift from moving on from things in the past. Um, some of this is actually going to be an overabundance of love or joy for something from the past. And so that's not actually something that's um, out of the ordinary when we're coming into a Mercury retrograde. You might be like hyper focused on someone or something from the past and then like, oh my gosh, I really did love that. And now I'm going to go out of my way to really show that love. Um, and so some of you might be reaching out to people that you love, that maybe you had a falling out with, whether that's a friend, whether that's a sibling, uh, whether that's an ex. And so is that the best idea? And they say, um, for most of you, I think that that will be received well. It's not going to be the case for everybody, but for most of you, it will be. For those of you who... Um, where it won't be received very well, you already know who you are, and don't do it. Don't do it. Um... Because it will bite you in the butt, big time. Okay, so what is going to be tainting any sort of feelings of happiness or joy for you in the month of March? And they say action, impulsiveness. Um, and, you know, active impuls acting impulsively when you're not feeling 100% confident. You know, like, okay, so for example, let's say I'm not feeling good about myself. So I go to a bar and I get super wasted and I'm feeling like ugly. So I just like hook up with some random person because I want to feel, you know, cared about or sexy or beautiful. And then I regret it the next day. It's that kind of an energy. It might not be something so extreme, but you might do something impulsively. It could be something, you know, like reaching out to somebody that you know is just going to make you feel sad instead of feeling loved. Um, so whatever it is that you're not feeling super confident about, um, you know, kind of going out of your way impulsively to try and control that situation and do something to fill that void. Um, I don't think it's advisable, to be honest. So what is it that you think will make you happy this month? And they're saying, um, you know, this sort of connection to the divine, to God, you know, Allah, spirit guides, angels, the universe, energy, whatever it is. Um, and you're not wrong. Okay, so how is this perception going to be true? And they're saying, like, you have to do this in your own way, though. You know, so like, for example, let's say you're thinking, I'm going to go to church. Okay, I really want to go to church and I want to pray and I want to be like around the music and like the whatever. And that's going to uplift me. You're going to end up disappointed that that's not actually the case because your spiritual connection, no matter how you experience that through meditation, through um, yoga, through tarot, through, um, you know, whatever, prayer, uh, this has to be a very individual activity. So I'm going to actually switch decks here and I'm going to see for the majority of Aries, what is the way that you can feel most connected to the spirit world this month? And they say rune stones, actually. I am a horrible person to ask about those because I don't know much about it. But um, a lot of you can feel some sort of connection or guidance that way in the month of March, okay? For the rest of you, what is it? Because I feel like 
I feel like that's a good portion of you, like a solid 60%, but not everybody. And they say, your nutrition, actually. Um, spiritualizing your food. Now, I know it sounds weird that you could spiritualize your food, but you can spiritualize anything. You know, it could be like saying a prayer before you eat something. It could be like, oh, thank you, food, for being so delicious and for giving me nutrients and energy. Um, it could be praying about, you know, your food. Um there's so many different ways that you could spiritualize your food. I can make like a 40-minute video on that, so I'm just going to skip over it. But you could type it into Google or into YouTube how to spiritualize your your nutrition, your food. Um, I'm sure that somebody's made a blog post somewhere about spiritual foods to eat or foods that increase your um, psychic development, you know, stuff like that. Organic food. Oh, my God. Okay, anyway. How is your perception false that, you know, a deeper spiritual connection is going to help you achieve more happiness this month? And they're saying, um, <laughs> they're saying, like, if you feel like you have to spend money, you know, so if you don't already have runestones and you want to go out and buy, like, a really expensive set and, like, somehow that's going to help you do it or, like, you're going to spend more money, like, to have more nutritious, like, better foods, like we were talking about with the nutrients, they're like, that's not right. That's not right. Because... That's just creating, like, um, another barrier to, like, fully using it. Um, so that's an interesting way to think about things. They're saying, like, because whatever it is, if it's not something you can do already, it's not a habit that you're going to be able to sustain, and then it becomes that kind of more impulsive energy that we were talking about. And a lot of you are going to fail to see that, especially up until the new moon energy, um, but they're saying, like, be really realistic and honest with yourself about that. Like, if you're saying, you know what, yeah, I do need to connect to spirit, I'm going to go, like, buy all these healthy foods and see if that helps, and I'm going to, like, go get these, like, really fancy, like, engraved rune stones, and I'm going to put it on my list of things to do every day, like, honestly, you're not going to keep up with it. And so they're saying, like, <laughs> the bigger thing for you guys is just moving away from things that don't work for you anymore. Um, realizing what it is we need to leave in our past and what it is we need to move forward with. Kind of like I mentioned previous, that stop, drop, roll reading. What do I need to stop doing? What do I need to drop from my life? And what do I need to roll with in the month of March? Okay, so what's actually going to make you the most happy in the month of March? And they're saying endings, completion, wrapping things up, tying them in a pretty little bow, and then, you know, putting them in the garbage. Just like... Tying up loose land and saying, this is done. I'm finished with this. Moving on from relationships. Um, you know, maybe you've got a stack of papers on your table and just going through them really quick, filing what you need to, paying the bills you need to, and then throwing all of that documentation into the trash or scanning it into your computer so you can get those papers off your table. Completing little things is going to be huge for your level of happiness and it's also going to make you feel more confident because now you're succeeding at something. Writing it down on a piece of paper and then checking those things off is going to be huge. If you, for example, if you have a hard time like getting up and at it in the morning, have like the first th three things on a checklist that you might create be get up, um, brush your teeth, and um, get dressed. So straight in the morning, straight away in the morning, those three things you can cross them off your list, and you can feel successful. But you already did three out of ten things you decided, right? And so that'll boost your confidence and give you like more motivation to continue to carry forward and not make impulsive other decisions. Like ah, I'm gonna just like lay on the couch in my pajamas and watch Netflix instead of going to work. They're saying some of you have the capacity to do that because you're not feeling your most vibrant, fiery self. You know, Aries are super confident and they radiate like a lot of this like sexy, funny, like intriguing, interesting energy that other people want to be around. Like people perceive you to be so fun and like something in a lot of you might have shifted or switched or changed and... um but then you're kind of like, no, it hasn't shifted or switched or changed. I'm just finally feeling the effects of this bullshit I've been dragging, like, in my subconscious for a long time. And so they're saying, wrap that up. Identify what the problems are, how you're feeling, why you're feeling that way, and then cut those things out of your life, manipulate or change them, so now you can move on from that energy and fully embrace your happiness. A lot of you feel like good things aren't coming to you. You're feeling hopeless. And part of the reason why is because you haven't, 
totally shifted your perception to say, okay, well, that was then, and, like, the future is not dictated by the past. Like, I mean, sometimes it is, right? But, like, it doesn't have to necessarily dictate the past. We can only focus, like, on today and what we're going to do next like, the past happened, we can't go backwards. So that's done. Wrap it up, throw it away, and now let's move forward with what we have. Um, so, forces that are at play outside of your control in favor of your happiness, that will bring you happiness, is like, you know, if you stand here and you look at things objectively and you remove your feelings from it, especially around the week of the new moon, for whatever reason, the new moon is going to be huge for a lot of signs this month. If you stand there and you look like, you know, far past where you typically do, you know, which might be like just your friendships or your job, if you kind of like cast a bigger net and you're looking out there at like potential opportunities or like, you know, what exists um, beyond the usual for you, uh, that can bring you a lot of joy and happiness. It can bring you a lot of emotional fulfillment. You might be so focused on one specific thing in your life, and then when you kind of like broaden your horizons a little bit by doing so, you could experience a lot of joy and happiness, and new opportunities can come into your life, new people. Um, and But this is a very – and you kind of get some of your confidence back. Like – and I feel like a lot of this is done by, you know, not necessarily judging other people, but looking at other people and saying, okay, so I have this, you know, I'm feeling like garbage right now because of some recent failure, but now I'm going to like kind of expand my awareness and I'm going to look at my friend Joe and Joe, you know, used to be on drugs and he used to be like, you know, all these horrible things. And now he's a billionaire and he's super happy and he's married to the right person and like blah, blah, blah. And so you kind of like broaden your view. And so you go, okay, they can do it. Why can't I? Like, totally can. Totally can. Um, so then things that are kind of going to be working against your happiness but are out of your control this month. And they say this um, overflowing love energy, like whether you're ready for it or not, it might kind of come into your life. This like energy of like falling in love with something. And so it's in your better interest, especially leading up to that new moon, like I talked about, to put a finality, like close the door, close the lid on a box or something and just like put it to the side so that that's not shit that'll kind of flare up and cause you problems later in this love energy. So let's say you're, exp you're feeling a lot of love and joy in a career, okay? But then um, for whatever reason, they, you need to have like a certain credit score, okay, or uh, to maintain your security clearance or to, um, you know, like work at a bank or something like that. And so, you know, maybe you've been putting off, uh, you know, paying something that's late or turning in paperwork and it's affecting you negatively. Well, okay, I might love this, but maybe I'll lose it because I didn't tie those things up. Or conversely, maybe I'm going to walk into this new awesome relationship and fall madly in love with somebody, but because I didn't, you know, um, assert a boundary and say, you know what, I'm not going to deal with my ex anymore. Like they text me sometimes and like I sometimes engage in that. If you didn't block them or something, that might flare up at the exact wrong time and cause some damage to that new relationship. And so it's like, okay, I'm going to get closure on like certain things. I'm going to close them up, put them in a box, throw them away. That's done. That's the past. So I can step into this new awesome lovey energy. So um, as far as your lucky days this month go, you have the 15th of March. And then your um, power color of the month is white. So wearing white or imagining like this white cleansing energy kind of coming through your crown chakra all the way through your body would be good. And this one talks about lightening up. Okay, so like I said, kind of standing there objectively, like removing feelings from things and seeing, okay, what do I need to do um, to kind of get my confidence back? And so white gets rid of toxicity. It clears you, it cleanses you, not in the same way as yellow, but it um, kind of replaces any dark things with light, white, optimism, happiness, joyful love energy, okay? And so um, this brings you peace. It helps you to uh, have more integrity, to be more honest. It um, kind of it relates to like holiness, purity, right? Which is why you might be feeling like you need to be more spiritual this month or pray more this month or whatever. And then um, what else does it do? Helps you to kind of like get rid of that unnecessary baggage that we've been dragging around, like I mentioned. And so your affirmation with this one is, I give myself permission to lighten up 
and experience ease in my body and my soul, okay? So that's going to be very important for you. And now what I wanted to mention actually with this one is it's a 24. So things are okay and they're only going to get better. You will achieve more balance as this month progresses. However, our lucky day is also the 15th, which is a one, new beginnings, with a five, which can be like a sexy new beginning sometimes, but it can also mean, um, you know, a hardship, struggle, disappointment, like chaos energy. And so they're like, you know, you get to make a choice here. Do you want things to be stable and awesome and easy like when they start? Like having cleared away all this baggage and bullshit that you need to before you step into that? Or do you want to drag that shit with you and have it flare up and ruin things? Up to you guys. And so either way, you're going to come to this place of balance with a six. Um, but the approach is going to be different for some of you. So it's advisable that we like step back, remove our feelings, look at things objectively, understand what it is we need to do, what we need to clear away, what we need to Marie Kondo the fuck out of our life, and then we can experience joy, happiness, love, and balance a harmonious state, right? So there's that. Um, then your crystal of the month, surprise, it's, there's no such thing as coincidence, it's white, okay? This is called celestial aura. Um, Aura crystals sometimes are hard to find if they're not aqua aura. So um, anyway, the point is, with celestial aura here, what you get with this one is harmony. You're, um, you get balance. You get peace. You get like alignment of all your chakras and your auras and the meridians in your body and all of this stuff. It will actually help make your physical body feel better. Uh, but anyway... So this helps you to use your spiritual gifts to their fullest potential and kind of helps keep you on the right spiritual path or course. You can't, I'm, it's not like really doing justice like when I'm holding it back there. You see how sparkly that is? Probably not. It's so pretty. I love, oh, see, it's making a little light ray. So beautiful. Anyway, um, this helps you with uh, kind of coping with grief or loss or disappointment. It detoxes your body as well as your aura and your chakras. It relieves loneliness. It, um, you know, it enhances so many of your metaphysical abilities, which is maybe why, like, if rune stones were not something you were into before, all of a sudden, they're just making sense. Um, it helps you to feel more, like, self-aware. It helps you to bond with other people. Um, it helps you to reframe past situations, which is exactly what we need to do, right? Excuse me. Sorry. Um, and then what else does it do? It... It kind of like increases your consciousness, but also helps you to cooperate with others. It makes you less selfish. Not that Aries are always 100% selfish. Sometimes you can be, though, depending on what else is in your chart. So um, I have some of these, I believe, on my website. If you wanted to purchase one from me, you can get one from your local crystal shop as well. But if you get one from me, then you also get um, lessons on how to use crystals and stuff like that to your fullest advantage. They come in like a video format, so that'll be pretty awesome if you're like a visual learner, which you probably are if you're watching my video. Okay, anyway, um, what kind of energies do we need to bring into our life to help us uh, sustain any energy? any happiness energy that we get, you know, so that we can thrive. And it's like that energy of completion and seeing things as successful, envisioning our success, where we want to go, remembering that other people see us more positively than we see ourselves sometimes, and then deciding to see ourselves in that same positive light, okay? Um, how do we sustain that energy of happiness once we get it? And they're saying, you know, being in that moment of like, okay, this feels good. Expressing gratitude for the moments that feel really good or happy or joyful. For example, in the morning when it's really sunny, I'm like, oh my God, I just want to sit in the sun all morning. I'm so happy and joyful and excited. And then as my day goes on, I tend to be in a better mood and express a lot more gratitude for the little things, you know, like, I'm like, oh my gosh, my coffee is hot and I love it extra hot and it's like hotter than usual. This is amazing. And then my day just gets better. And they're saying, you know, kind of taking a step back, reducing our impulsivity, and looking at things through an objective lens are going to be the very best things for you this month. March overall, in a nutshell, anything we missed, they're saying, okay, so obviously 
you know, if we're not feeling um, super confident and awesome like we typically do as an Aries, something's out of whack, something's out of balance, even though other people are giving us love and, you know, like they're giving us compliments and, you know, they're saying things that make us feel good about ourselves, we're not internalizing it. And so they're saying being open to receive all of those things, like is not the issue, which is great because that's what a lot of other people do is they push, you know, these gifts away. Uh, but basically for you, it's about believing it. You know, if somebody gives you a compliment that, hey, you look really great, like um, you're looking super beautiful or super handsome today, if you just say, oh, thanks, you know, but you really need to believe it. You're like, yeah, you know what? I do. I mean, don't say that out loud. And then everybody's like, you're an arrogant prick. But I mean – Go look in the mirror and be like, you know what? They're right. Or um, if somebody says, hey, you're really good at this or you're really smart, be like, you know what? Actually, yeah, because that's how we're going to increase our confidence and our happiness and our joy in a better way than being impulsive and kind of like seeking out a destructive way um, to replace, you know, the feelings that we need to feel that we aren't feeling in the beginning of this month leading up to that new moon. So that is your March. I love you so much. Have the best March ever. Thanks so much for watching this video and getting all the way to the end of it. I really appreciate your support. If you are interested in other videos, click here. If you are interested in subscribing, go ahead and click here. Hit that notification bell so that you get alerted to when new videos come out and also when I do surprise live streams. And then if you're interested in winning a free 20 minute video uh, reading personally every month, go ahead and click right here. Mwah!